What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode. So in this video we're going to go over the HTML5 semantic elements and sectioning elements. Now hopefully you saw the other videos that are part of this playlist where we're using HTML to create our website. If you haven't, take a look at those first. But if you have, then let's get started. Alright, so we're going to fire up our text editor. And over here I just gave you some basic information and basic tags to look at and a general idea of how this stuff works. But now we're going to actually start organizing everything and making sure that it is using HTML5 semantic markup. Alright, so what do I mean by that? Well, when you go to a website, we'll use my website as an example, we can see the websites broken up into specific areas. We have the navigation section over here, we have the site logo, so this can be considered like the header area. We have some uh, sections over here of content, and if you go to an article, we have some more stuff. We have the title, we have the actual article, we have the sidebar, and this will be an aside. And then you scroll down, and then you have a footer area over here. Alright, so now we can see that a website's broken up into specific sections. So HTML5 has some semantic markup tags that we could use. So if we go back over here, we're going to start structuring this properly. So we'll start at the top and let's say we're going to create our nav bar to be at the top of our website. So we will go over here and we will type out nav and then we'll close that off. And this is the nav element or the HTML5 tag for navigation. So in here we would use an unordered list with list items with uh, links to other sections or other pages within our website. And we're going to get more into links and linking to other pages in an upcoming video. But I just want to give you the general overview of how this works. So we would have the nav section over here. And then if we scroll down, we could start separating some of the stuff. So let's say we're going to take out this BR tag. Let's grab this over here. Cut that out. We're going to put it over here. And then we'll take this paragraph over here, cut that one out, and we'll put it after the H3. For now, we're not going to use these over here. We'll come back to that whenever we need them. So we'll delete those, bring that up. All right, so now we have over here, we have the uh, H1 tag. So this will be dependent on if you're on the home page of your website or if you are on a particular blog post or, or a page on your site. But let's just say for argument's sakes, we're going to have this. We'll cut it. And let's say we're going to be on the home page. So we would have our H1 tag up there. We have our navigation. And then we have what would look like to be an article. So since this would be the article, we would use the article tag. And then we'll scroll down further. And let's say we're going to close it off over here. All right, so now we have our article tag and it's being closed down here. Then we could also have our footer tag. All right, so now we have this. So this could be, if we go into another website, let's go over here. We could have our footer section over here. You see, we have our site title over here, our navigation, our article, and a footer section. If we go to some of the um, demo themes that I have on my website, take a look over here and you can see we have something similar. But basically what we're doing is we're creating the structure and layout of our website. So we have the nav, the article, and the footer. Now typically you'll also see that on a website you'll have, let's go over here, you'll see you have some form of sidebar. If we go to my website over here, we we'll go to our blog post, this one how to make a WordPress website. You see we have the sidebar over here. All right, so that would be an aside. So we go over here. And you would put your aside there. So this could be the sidebar on the right hand side. It could be a sidebar on the left hand side. It doesn't actually have to be on the side. It could actually be below. So the aside tag in HTML5 is, is there to give the browser some information about the content that's in that section and saying that it's not primary or it's not the main content, but it's related to the content that's on the page. So that can go in different sections or different areas. So if you want, in the aside would be a good location to possibly use the H4 tags. And now over here in the footer tags, we can put some copyright information. Some copyright information or links can be placed here. All right, so we have our nav tag or nav element. We have our article. There's also some other tags and elements that we could use as well. We could use the header tag and you could use that in multiple places. So let's say we're going to be over here in the um, top section of our page. So underneath the body tag, we can give ourselves some space and we can type out header over here and close it out. And then underneath the closing nav tag, 
we can put the closing header tag. So this can signify the header of the web page or website. But you could also put a header tag inside of the article itself. I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit. So basically what we're doing here is inside the article itself, we're creating the header for that particular article. So this is semantically correct. Now let's fill out the nav section just to give it some context and to give it something that we could see in the browser. All right, so over here we'll put in an unordered list. And then we'll put in a couple of list items. We'll save that. And inside the list items, we're going to create some anchor elements. So these are links and we haven't created other pages yet. So I'll just put in a pound sign just to signify what would be a link. So we'll put in the lesser than sign, the A to represent the anchor element, then the href. We're going to assign it the value. So we give it the um, equal sign and then the quotation marks. And for now, I'm just going to put in the pound sign. But here is where we will put the actual link itself. Now we could also put a title attribute. So we would put title equals, let's say this is going to be the home page. And then we would go outside of this quotation mark. We would close it off. And then we would actually put in the clickable link or the text that you would click on. And then we'll close off the anchor element. And that's it. Now we'll just copy this entire section right here. We're going to put it over here inside these other list items. So instead of home page, we could put about contact and let's say blog. All right, so now we have our unordered list with the list items and some links and then nested inside of our nav element. All right, so if you save everything here, we go back to the browser. We go back over here, refresh this. Now you can see we have the um, H1 tag over here. This would be our site title. We have our navigation links over here. We have our H2 tag. This is inside of, our, of an article. Then we have our paragraphs. Then this would be the sidebar. Now with CSS, we will be able to style this out and we will be able to place this anywhere we want in terms of the layout of the web page or website. So it could be in the sidebar over here. It can be on the left hand side or it can remain on the bottom. Then we have our footer section over here. All right, so we have a couple of more HTML5 semantic elements that we could work with. One of them is the section and the other one is main. And let's go over those now. All right, so this is where a lot of people get confused in terms of when to use section and when to use article. Because they can be interpreted as meaning the same thing. But article is a little bit more specific versus sections a little bit more generic. So in some websites, you would see that you would have the section and then you would have the article nested inside of the section. And then on other websites, you would see that it would be the article. And then you would have sections inside of the article. So it's really dependent on what the nature of your specific website is, what the layout flow is that you have. I typically find that article is going to be used most often. And when you need to use a section element, you're going to kind of know. But as we go through this playlist, I'll show you different examples of when to use which. All right, so then you also have the main element. Now this can get even more confusing because what you can do is you can signify the main content of an actual article or web page. So over here, we can replace a section with main. And this will make more sense because what we're doing here is we're signifying that this is the main article of our web page. And then we have the aside, which is secondary to our article. So you'll often find that main is going to be used in lieu of section, unless the section is going to be embedded inside the article itself. Now, you could also use the footer tag in your articles. So let's say over here, let's say this is going to be secondary stuff. So it could be the information of the next blog post or it could be related posts. So you can actually say that this is going to be a footer section. So this is the footer of our article. All right, so I know I went over a lot, but I just want to introduce you to the HTML5 semantic markup tags and how you would use them. Now, just remember, I always recommend that you check your HTML to make sure that it is coded properly. So we can actually check by text input. So take a look at the address. It's validator.w3.org forward slash nu forward slash. We come over here. Let's grab all of our HTML. We'll copy it. We're going to want to make sure that our HTML is actually going to validate. And we'll check. And we see we have some things that we can correct. This is why it's good to use this. So if we go back to my website, 
over here is view page source. So over here in the HTML tag, I'm using the language attribute. So we're going to copy that. Go back to our text editor. Go to the top. Over here in the HTML tag, we'll paste in the language attribute. That'll take care of one of them. Another issue that I saw is that I mistyped the closing footer tag here. As you can see, I missed the forward slash. So we'll save that. Select all again. Copy. Come back here. Put in our HTML. Paste it. And we'll check. And now when we check the document, we can see that we just have one more error. And this one I did on purpose because I wanted to show you the difference between a block level element and an inline element. And we're going to go deeper into that in another video. So I'm kind of jumping the gun over here. But what's taking place is that we have our opening P tag here and our closing P tag here. But we also have a block quote in there. So our block quote is causing a problem. So what we have to do here is we'll take this block quote out. We'll cut that out. And let's say we'll put it over here. Now we'll select everything. Go back to our browser. Check. And now we're good to go. So that's why it's important to always validate your code because there's going to be times when you nest something inside of um, an HTML element that's supposed to be inline or block level. And I haven't touched on that yet. And I kind of wanted to do another video just specifically for block level elements. But here when we validated this, it pointed it out. So I figured, let me just touch on it real quick. All right. So we saw that we had to correct some stuff, which we did. We did some common mistakes, which is I failed to put in the forward slash over here. So now it's there. And we took care of the block level element. All right. So let's recap this video real quick. We have our header section over here. This represents the top of the website where we have our site title. This would be the site title section. And this would be the nav section. Inside the nav section, we have our unordered list with our list items and our anchor elements. And we're going to create these pages in another video. But this gives us a temporary navigation. Below that, we have the closing header tag. Then we go into our main tag, or this could be a section tag. Then we have our article tag. Inside of that, we have the header tag again, because now this is the header for the article itself. And then this would be the title. And then over here, we have the paragraph tags. And then over here, we have the block quotes. We have some more paragraph tags, and we have the H3 tags there. And then we decided to make this the footer. Now, this again could be like related articles or related pages or other content you want your website visitors to see. This is important because you want time on site to be high. It's part of search engine optimization. So the more relevant content you could display to the person, the more likely it is they would travel to that other article. We have the closing article over here, closing main tag over there. And then we have our aside, which would be the sidebar. And then we have our footer section here. Now, this would be for the bottom of the actual website or web page. All right, so that's a lot that we covered. But just keep in mind that there's going to be some HTML5 elements that you're going to be working with consistently on your website. And again, those are the header tags, the nav tags, the main tags, maybe the section tag, the article tag, and the footer tag, and also the aside tag. We save this. We go back here. We'll refresh our page in the browser. And while it may not look like much now, we're developing the structure and the layout for the website and the web page. And then later on, we're going to introduce CSS so we can style this out. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification icon down below. So that way, when I release another video, you'll be notified. And I will see you next time. Take care.